Many automakers are catering to environmentally conscious buyers by offering hybrid, plug-in hybrid, and electric cars, but few of them are putting all three of those powertrains as an option within one vehicle. The Hyundai Ioniq is an exception to that. There are three different versions so you can get exactly the type of green powertrain you want. There's a hybrid, a plug-in hybrid, and then this, the Ioniq Electric. With an impressive driving range and an attractive entry price, it's a compelling entrance into the EV market. How does it look? Hyundai designers did a great job of making the eco-conscious Ionic look, well, just like a normal car. It's a sleek shape that recalls the Alandra sedan, albeit with the super-functional liftback design you can see in back. Although it's a very aerodynamic shape, a 0.24 drag coefficient, the Ionic doesn't look weird like some electric cars. That's a good thing for convincing skeptics to try the Ionic. This being the electric model, note that there's no grill opening up front because the motor doesn't need much cooling, and uniquely styled LED taillights and 16-inch wheels. How's the storage? Even though there's a big battery back here, the trunk is pretty generously sized. With the back seats up, there's about 24 cubic feet of storage space. It's really easy to fold down the back seats and then you get a lot of space. As you'll see, we had no issue fitting our three suitcases from away back there. There's an average sized center console compartment, plus a neat slot in the console for storing your phone with wireless charging. But this huge flat spot between the front seats is the best in-cabin storage space. It's roomy enough for a purse or a small backpack. You'll also find two cup holders and door pockets to keep your favorite beverages close to hand. Is it roomy? Things are good up front where there's lots of headroom and an airy sensation provided by the low belt line, plus plenty of adjustability for the driver's seat. In the back, that sloping roof line means headroom isn't quite so good. It's just about perfect for me to sit up straight, and there's enough legroom and knee room that I feel comfortable back here, though I will note that the back seat isn't as roomy as the one in the Chevy Bolt EV. How does the interior feel? Just like the outside, one thing that's really noticeable about the inside of the Ionic Electric is that it mostly just feels like any other gas-powered car. There's a lot of nice soft-touch materials in here, the seats are very comfortable, there's great visibility, and all the controls and switches and things that I touch look and feel exactly how I'd expect for a car in this price range. Is it well equipped? Even the base Ionic comes with things like a 7-inch touchscreen, push-button start, a backup camera, a color instrument display, heated front seat, satellite radio and Bluetooth, and automatic climate control. Go for a fully loaded model like this one, and you can add on features like a sunroof, adaptive cruise control with pre-collision braking, leather seats, navigation, and wireless phone charging. As is the case in most competitively priced EVs, though, you won't get every luxury feature available in other cars in this price range. Cooled seats, heated rear seats, and self-parking are all unavailable, and you can't get a power passenger seat either. How's the infotainment system? A 7-inch touchscreen comes standard, with this 8-inch version featuring navigation available as an option. While it's not the quickest or the prettiest system around, I really like how simple it is to use every function in Hyundai's infotainment system, especially thanks to these physical shortcut, volume, and tuning buttons. The integrated navigation works well, as does Bluetooth phone calling and all the music options. For the electric, there are also menus showing the battery's state of charge, plus the location of nearby chargers and how long it will take to juice up the battery pack. You can also use this Blue Link smartphone app to check on your car's charge status or in other information remotely. And of course, the support for Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Is it a good daily driver? Yeah, in day-to-day -day driving, whether it's around town or in the suburbs or on the highway, the Ionic is really, really nice to live with. 
For starters, it's really quiet, and part of that is because there's no gas engine up front making noise, but also it's because the cabin does a really good job of keeping wind and road noise out. I think the ride is also pretty comfortable as well. We drive on pretty rough roads around here most of the time, but the car's doing a great job of soaking up impacts. Now driving this car is really easy and straightforward. There's no gears shifting. The response from the electric motor is really, really smooth. I also have these two paddle shifters here that let me choose a couple of modes for the regenerative braking. So I can leave it in zero, which I have now, where when I lift off the throttle, the car essentially coasts just like a gasoline car would do. But then I can shift to these various regen levels so that I can adjust how much braking force I get when I lift off the throttle. So I can have Regen 1, which feels like a normal electric car, or 2 or 3, which are progressively more aggressive. So I like driving in level 1, but what it means is that you get to pick exactly how you want the car to feel, whether you want it to coast more or regenerate much more energy, just depending on what type of driving you're doing. The other thing that I really like about this car is that it's really easy to see out of big airy windows, a low belt line. The only direction you can't really see that well is from behind. There's a little bar bisecting the rear window, kind of like on the Toyota Prius and Chevy Volt. This car does have a backup camera and blind spot monitoring system though, so it's certainly not a deal breaker. It's just one of the issues with giving it that really aerodynamic shape in the back. And the final thing I'll point out is this car, like a lot of the ones we review these days, has an electronic shift button arrangement. This one though I think is one of the easier ones to use. It's really easy to tell which button is which, you can tell them apart by feel, and I've never so far mistaken it and put it in neutral instead of reverse or something. Is it fun to drive? So maybe not fun, but like a lot of EVs, the Ionic Electric is really quick, especially in city driving, because you get so much low-end torque from the electric motor. This one makes 118 horsepower, but 215 pound-feet of torque. And because it never has to shift gears to access that torque, it's really responsive. I've even got a drive mode button where I can pick between normal, which is what I use most of the time, eco, and then sport mode. So in sport, I get a different look on the instruments, and the throttle response is really aggressive. Now the handling in this car is totally fine and acceptable, but it's not fun. But I do enjoy that you have that really, really responsive electric motor torque when you want to squirt through traffic in the city. How's the fuel economy? The EPA rated driving range for a fully charged Ionic is 124 miles, which is very good for affordable battery electric vehicles. That's more range than competitors like the Nissan Leaf, BMW i3, Ford Focus Electric, and so on. However, the Chevy Bolt and Volkswagen e-Golf do deliver more driving range, as does every Tesla model, though they all cost more. Fully charging the Ionic's 28 kilowatt hour battery takes about four and a half hours on a 220 volt charger. If you find a high-speed DC fast charger, you can charge the battery 80% in just half an hour. How much is it? The base Ionic Electric starts at $29,500, and this limited model is $32,500. This test car also has the $3,500 limited ultimate package. But remember that EVs like this are eligible for a $7,500 federal tax break, lowering your effective cost, and your city or state might offer even more benefits. The Ionic is one of the most affordable new electric cars, as that entry price undercuts cars like the Leaf, Kia Soul EV, BMW i3, and of course, the Chevy Bolt. What are the negatives? Although its driving range is very impressive overall, the Ionic Electric can't quite match up to the driving ranges of cars like the Chevy Bolt EV or Tesla models. Of course, the Hyundai is also a lot cheaper than those, so for some price-sensitive customers, that trade-off might be worth it. Who should buy it? Like any EV, the Hyundai Ionic Electric does require that you accept some of the limits of electric cars, things like having a relatively short driving range and needing a home charging station and so on. But this car is so lovely to drive and so affordable that I think it would be a really easy transition for a lot of people. So if you're ready to try gas-free driving, this could be the electric car for you. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to get all of our new video content, including a new Why Buy review like this every single week. You should also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course at motorone.com.